It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the films of June 20th, 2003. we got three films to look at today, so let's go ahead and jump on another year. And I just want to flashback to a year before, when Spider-Man came out. And uh, most audiences were not only entertained to a really good superhero movie from, from of course, the, the web slinger known as Spider-Man, but also there was a teaser for a movie that would be coming out this particular weekend. And so while people were getting ready to see Spider-Man, they also got a glimpse of this. How can you not be excited after a trailer like that? I mean, that trailer used to scare the bejesus out of me. I mean, that's, I mean, when he's when his eye turned green and it's just not, it's straight look at that eye looking right at me, I was just like, I got uncomfortable watching that sometimes because you know back in the day when you're online and you used to see these little trailers popping up out of nowhere, you'd be going on your website and all of a sudden the thing for a trailer for like a death to smooch or the, or in this case the Hulk would show up and. It used to scare the bejesus out of me because it just comes out of nowhere, and it's just like, like, how can you not get excited for a movie like this? Oh, they found a way to make you really, really less optimistic about it when you see stuff like this in the tr next couple of trailers. It's like the game released. It's already there. My son. The world will not tolerate his existence. What did you do to me? Mutated dogs. Really bad looking mutated dogs. And, um, God, I wish that was the only thing I could say that's wrong with these trailers that lead you to the thing we're about to talk about here, but, um, it gets worse. When you left with no choice, I'm sending a surprise visit from some friends of mine. When you're pushed too far, you're a pathetic freak. Don't just get even. You're making me angry. Get mad. I don't think you're gonna like me when I'm angry. I don't even like you when you're not angry. This movie... This movie is, um... I think you know what it is, but let's talk about the story first. That is uh, Eric Banner as Bruce Banner, a brilliant scientist with a cloudy past about his family who was involved in an accident in his laboratory causing him to become exposed to gamma radiation, and Nanomedes, a tiny life form that is supposed to heal wounds that has coped everything which with which they had made contact with. Confused and curious about his survival, Banner discovers that since the accident, he's become this... When he becomes angry, he transforms into this giant green monster that we know as the Hulk, destroying everything in sight in an act of fury. Boost's mysterious past and the answers to why the radiation has its effect becomes revealed to him as his birth father, David Banner, played by Nick Nolte, intervenes with Hope and continues experimenting on him. Yeah, you know, it's funny, when I did I didn't see this movie at first for the longest time. It wasn't until the next Incredible Hulk movie came out five years later. The first time I saw it, I didn't think it was that terrible. But yeah, once I saw the Edward Norton movie, I was just kinda like, okay, screw that last Hulk movie. That's how much I love that the Incredible Hulk. But this again this gets worse and worse every time I see it. This is without a doubt one of the worst Marvel movies ever made. It takes a badass character in the Hulk and just turns him into a pussy. Like, he is such a cowardly mess of a character in this film, and it's just... Let's start with... Let's go through the problems of the film. One of them starts off with the film focusing on discovering more of what the Hulk... of who the Hulk is, rather than having him do what he does best. I swear to God, there are multiple scenes in this movie that delve more into the story of Bruce Banner and the Hulk than there are scenes of the Hulk tearing up shit like he's supposed to do. I mean, when will people learn that we don't care about these movie monsters having backstories that we don't, is like, do we really need to have the backstories of people like Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Leatherface, or Michael Myers? No. Because once you add those elements in there, how they become these menaces, 
they aren't scary anymore. It's like with Maleficent. I mean, they took one of the badass Disney villains and made a movie where they give you the backstory, and it's just like, well, now you just made her more of a complicated character because you set her up as a good guy at first, and now, like, like what have like what's the point? And here it happens with the Hulk, and they come up with a stupid storyline involving Bruce's dad playing a part of why he keeps turning into the Hulk, which adds more plot holes to the story, even when it gets to the end of the movie, where they have all these, where they have this one, this big climax, where uh, Bruce has to fight his dad, and like he has to, and his dad gets all these superpowers, and just has to become this big bloated CG mess, and uh, speaking of CG messes, um, you thought those dogs were bad? This entire movie has some of the worst visual effects I've ever seen in a movie, I mean, the transformations of the Hulk are so awful in this movie, you can't take him seriously at all. This is 2003. I get it. Technology has advanced in the 20 plus years since then, but I know they could do visual effects better than this. Hell, I could do visual effects better than this. I have no way of doing visual effects, but I can tell you right now, I know how to do them better than anything that they pull off in this movie. That's how bad this movie is. If there's one thing that I can give to the film's credit, it's the casting. Some of the casting is not bad. Like, Eric Banner's not bad as Bruce Banner. Jennifer Connelly's not bad as Betsy, as Betty Ross. Sam Elliott's not bad as the Thunderbolt Ross. They're playing their parts okay, but the problem is they're not given a whole lot to do. There's more, expo there's more exposition going on in this film than there is an actual story, and that's the problem with the film. Hulk, it's what Ang Lee was trying to do with it. He was trying to make a monster movie with a character who's not really a monster. He was trying to do, is like, he tried to make the Hulk a miniaturized version of Godzilla, but the Hulk is not that kind of a threat. Like, he, like, he wants to more, explore more of the story, but that's not what people go to these movies to see, and leave it to the Marvel Cinematic Universe to finally make Hulk films, or character, see movies with the Hulk, that actually give him a storyline where he can also be a badass as well. Like you have to be, you have to have a mixture of both here with the character of the Hulk. You can make a film where you go into the backstory of the Hulk, but you have to have a story. You have to also have it where the Hulk does what the Hulk does best. And when he does it in this movie, it's very little on. It's like in a span of like 10, 15 minutes of the whole movie towards the end. That's it. This is a film that's over two hours long. This thing cost $137 million to make, and this is the best they could come up with. And I'm not going to blame Ang Lee for this. I think he was just brought in to be, essentially, a director for hire. I think he was in a bad situation, like what John Woo was, when you know he made Face Off, and then they brought him in to do Mission Impossible 2, and he kind of ruined his career with that. But, you know, at least the difference between John Woo and Ang Lee is that Ang Lee... This was more, this wasn't much of a, a thing that nearly killed that killed his career. It was more of a blemish because as soon as he got off of this film and started making great films again, like *The Brokeback Mountain* and *Life of Pi*, you start to realize maybe he wasn't the problem with the Hulk after all. Maybe he just was a guy that should not have been attached to this movie whatsoever. And and sadly, it's a problem that we're seeing a lot more nowadays with all these sequels coming in here, with all these different directors who have never directed a blockbuster movie and should have not been in, in that situation in the first place. I'm looking at the guy from Twisters who who's, did Minari. Like, he did a f independent film, and Universal said, we want to give you $100 million to make a sequel that nobody is asking for, but, you know, hey, Jurassic World was a success with a, with a director who had never been, touched a blockbuster before, so why can't we do it here? But there's a difference, though. Jurassic Park has more of a lasting legacy than freaking Twisters does. But um, I'm going off of a completely different subject altogether. But the bottom line here is that Ang Lee's Hulk is a mess. It's one of the worst superhero movies ever made. Honestly, if you want to see the true versions of how the Hulk should be, there's the Edward Norton Incredible Hulk. There's the Avengers movies. There's the Thor Ragnarok. That's the Hulk. This is not. So, plain and simple. This is just not the Hulk. Uh, so... So, uh, can we turn the tide here with our next movie? It's a Rob Reiner film. It's got Kate Hudson and Luke Wilson in it. It's called Alex and Emma. Uh, I don't really see what could go wrong with this movie. What's your book about? It's about the powerlessness of being in love. How it devours the inside of a person like a deadly virus. It's a comedy. Are you out of your mind? From Rob Reiner, the director of When Harry Met Sally. I don't like tomato skins. Who are you? <laughs> Wilson, Kate Hudson, Kate Hudson, and Kate Hudson. Oh, baby, yes! Alex and Emma. 
Alex and Emma. This film is not yet rated. Starts Friday, June 20th. Oh, not franchise pictures. Dead on arrival. Dead on arrival. As soon as you see the franchise pictures logo, it's like... <laughs> just... It's over. But it's all over from here. And uh, you have a story here where you have a writer, played by Luke Wilson, who must publish a novel in 30 days or face the wrath of Warren Sharks. So you got Kate Hudson playing all these different multiple roles in here. And, um, and it's just... And for Rob Reiner, this is the guy that has had made some bad movies. You know, stuff like uh, North. You know, stuff like um, uh, The Story of Us, Ghost of Mississippi. Um, but this is definitely right up there with one of his worst movies. Mostly because... It just feels like a film that does not fit the mold of what you expect from Rob Reiner and what he could bring to the table here. Like, it feels like, it, kind of like with The Hulk, it felt like this was a film that Rob Reiner was forced to do as a director for hire. Just, hey, we, hey, we, need, a, we need a name for this film. We don't think Luke Wilson and Kate Hudson are top draws, even though Kate Hudson's been nominated for an Oscar. But you've been nominated for an Oscar, so let's go ahead and put you in here and see if you can fix this. And... Clearly he could not, because this film just, it just misfires on so many levels. Too good of a cast to be wasted on this film. A good director, just, it's a franchise pictures movie. What more did you expect from this? Um, yeah, this is, um, as soon as that logo comes up, it's just like, turn out the lights, the party is over. They say that all good things must come to an end, so. So, uh, yeah, um, let's go ahead and move on to our last movie here, which, can we turn the tie with our last movie here? Um, let's see if we can. This is from Justin to Kelly. It's not the best time. It's not the best time. Music will bring two strangers together. Hey, they're up on the beach, and nothing can come between them. I'm gonna ask her out again. Except all their friends. So what does this all need to do to get in? We're a million hot girls here, and you're still talking about the one girl who blew you off. Kelly Clarkson. I should take a chance. Justin Barini. Miss Ball special in the musical event of the summer. Justin to Kelly, rated PG, June 20th, only in theaters. Well, I'll give it this. It was the musical event of the summer, and the fact that it was the only musical released in the summer of 2003, so it really wasn't an event. More just like, a, hey, we don't have any other musicals in here. We'll advertise this as the musical event of the summer, and maybe that'll force people to come see our film. Um, this is one of the worst weekends of the year. Maybe one of the worst weekends for, movie, for big movies of all time, because, man... From Justin to Kelly certainly is, it's something. It's, um, it's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the plot for this and just go into it. This takes place during spring break in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We have Texas singing waitress Kelly Taylor meeting Pennsylvania college student Justin Bell, played by Kelly Clarkson and Justin Guarini. They fall for each other and various romantic complications ensue. Uh, Kelly's friend Kaya falls in love with charming busboy Carlos. Kelly's other friend Alexa seems to keep Justin and Kelly from meeting. Justin's friend Brandon is also getting on the rocks out of a sexy beach patrol woman. And Justin's other friend Eddie tries to hook her up with a cyber pal. And this is a film that was so terrible that it almost didn't get released. And judging by the film that we have here, it probably shouldn't have been, but all in good time. Some theater chains literally were threatening not to screen the film when Disney... When not, not Disney, but... Um, Eventually, this would be Disney, but 20th Century Fox announced plans to rush it to VHS and DVD a mere six weeks after its original release. The deuce, you say? I mean, it's not like nowadays where we just release movies 17 days in theaters and then this, and then say, here it is on digital, and then go like, well, why didn't The Fall Guy do well? Well, dumbasses, you literally are putting it out on Blu-ray on digital 17 days after it was released in theaters. And you're expecting it to become a hit because in theaters still. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, but again, we'll save that for another time. But um, Fox ultimately relented and pushed the release date back a few months. And after the opening weekend flop, they decided to reinstate the original release plan. And the film was released in theaters on August 26th. So, theater chains threatened to pull the film. Probably shouldn't even bother to do that. Because you just, not only did you waste the studio's time by pushing it back, but... It was all for naught because this film was gone after literally two weeks. Like, they didn't even wait the six weeks. Like, you could have easily done done what, they, what we do today. Just put it in theaters for 17 days and then put it out on DVD. Nobody would have given a crap. Like, you wasted their time by doing this. But 
then again, this this there was this genre in 2003 where they were just like, this was this was actually the second theatrical release film based off a reality show. We already talked about the role Cancun. We know how bad we know how bad that movie was. Yeah, and guess what? That sucked too. But this film, I mean, I don't get it. I have no idea what they were doing. They were basically just. They were just trying to cash in on something that just premiered the year before with American Idol. This was a film that was this was a film based off the thing that pushed Fox to the number one spot in terms of network television for the first time ever, and um, that was a pretty big deal for them. Like Fox, you know, they had spent the last ten years establishing themselves as the fourth television network with The Simpsons, you know, Beverly Hills 90210, Melrose Place, and then the NFL pushed them over the map, but. This was the one that put them over the top as the number one network for a good amount of time. And don't get me wrong, Kelly Clarkson and Justin Guarini can be decent actors if you give them good scripts to work off. I mean, it's funny how Justin Guarini actually had a career, not in music, but in terms of those Dr. Pepper commercials when he was Little Sweet. And he's actually pretty hilarious in those. Yeah, it's far-fetched and over the top, but he's acting. He's coming off as humorous. And in this, he's just... He's just nothing, and in fact, everybody in this movie is just nothing. It's like Kelly Clarkson; she's too talented to be in a good movie like this. Like, what a waste of potential for this movie to ha have with these two people. These two people have shown they have more talent than this film is letting on, and that's. And really, I don't think it's their fault because, like I said before, it's nothing but a stupid cash grab in a year when American Idol already tried to cash grab people, like. They didn't even wait a year after the show premiered to already premiere a spin-off called American Juniors, which also failed miserably. Like, uh, just go ahead and listen to some of this from Kids in America, this version of Kids in America, and um, um, I'm just going to let you listen to some of this. Looking at a dirty old window, all the cars and I sit in a rushing bag. Sorry I can't hear or see you guys because I was literally ripping out my ears and my eyes after listening to that abomination. I mean, like, okay, not really, but can you blame me? I, can you blame me? But that was horrible. I almost did the exact same. I almost did that in real life when, the, when I saw that. I was just like, what the hell were they thinking? And But you get the point. The movie is bad. It's terrible. It's rubbish. But the big question is, why does it even exist? Well, like I said, American Idol was a big hit at the time, but was it really that big of a hit that somebody at Fox said, you know what we need to do? We need to, if we, now that we've got this big TV success, let's make a movie around the two frontrunners who have had no acting experience up to this point. What could possibly go wrong? I mean, what's the point? It makes no sense whatsoever. You can just look at the trailer and know right off the bat that none of this shit makes any sense at all. And here's the thing that really worries me about this. Fox was thinking that this was going to be a hit. They actually put the money into it. They put a $12 million budget on this film. It made back $5 million. Where did that $12 million go? I mean, Kelly Clarkson and Justin Greeny could not be that big of a name to warn a film that has $12 million attached to it. And, like, this is 2003. They had barely reached the peak of their careers yet. I mean, Kelly Clarkson's first album came out the same year. Like, like what were they thinking? What were they thinking with this movie? And... This comes out around the same time when we've had a lot of big musical bombs. You know, Mariah Carey's Glitter, you know, uh, Britney Spears' Crossroad. We haven't even gotten to stuff like Ashley Simpson's Undiscovered or Hilary Duff's Razor Voice. But honestly, this might be the worst of the very worst. I mean, this is the worst of the very worst. The acting is bad. The story makes no sense whatsoever. The music is terrible. The choreography is awful. It's just an all-around mess of a film, and it easily earns the distinction of one of the worst films ever made. In fact, it's in my top... Five or six worst movies I've ever seen in my life. It also earns the distinction as the single worst adaptation of a television series ever. And I know it's not based off entirely of American Idol, but it's based off of it's an American Idol cash grab, regardless, and a bad one at that. There's a reason why I said this is one of my least favorite movies of all time, and it's it's that bad, people. Just avoid this movie like the plague. From Justin to Kelly, just. Just avoid it, for the love of God. Well, that was a fun episode, to say the least. Uh, like I said, that may be the worst weekend of the year for movies. Maybe one of the worst weekends for big new releases I've ever seen. And um, can the end of the month save it? We've got two movies next time. 
uh, when we meet, we have Charlie's Angels Full Throttle, which the first movie was very dated right away, so we'll see if Full Throttle can change that. I sincerely doubt it, but um, I know we'll at least have one good movie next week because the next movie we'll have here is uh, 28 Days Later, the Danny Boyle film. So next week will not be as bad as this week. I can guarantee you that, but... Um, but uh, that will be in for the next episode of Time About the Movies. But until then, thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this, um, please hit the plays on the next page. Uh, also, uh, hit the plays on the next page. Check out the previous episode. And also, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this on this channel. I'm tired. I've had a big, I've had a busy day today. So, um, with that said, I will see you guys next time. And until then, as always, take care. I'll see you guys next time.